Dear all, welcome to the GATE coaching class. I am Margaret, Assistant Professor, Department of Ripley, SA Engineering College. So today I am going to take the class in the topic electric circuits and which I am going to concentrate on sinusoidal steady state analysis. So sinusoidal steady state analysis, if you see this, we have two terms in this, one is sinusoidal, the other one is steady state analysis. So sinusoidal, from the name itself, we can say that it is for AC circuit, that is for AC supply. So sinusoidal, the waveform input, whatever we give, is in the alternating form. So you can see this waveform where you have an alternating waveform. It has got a positive half cycle and a negative half cycle. Both are equal in magnitudes. Okay. So since it is an alternating waveform, you can represent this waveform in terms of a sine wave or a cos wave. So the, the input or your representation of this waveform is given by V of t is equal to Vp cos omega t plus phi, where Vp is called as your peak voltage and phi is called as your phasor angle. So you can represent this, as I said earlier, in terms of sine also. The same waveform, you can write it as V of t is equal to Vp sine of omega t plus phi. Both are same. Only the angle differs. Based on that angle difference, your waveform phase shift will be changed. So sinusoidal has three important factors. One is your amplitude. The other one is frequency. The third one is your phase. So now we are going to analyze the steady state of the sinusoidal signals or the waveforms. So as I said, steady state analysis is another important topic. Generally in a circuit, whenever supply is given, it reaches its actual value after some time period. And that time period is very minimum and that time period is called as your transient period. So during transient period, the values from its initial value 0, it keeps rising and after some time, the value becomes constant with the small oscillations and that constant value is called as, called as your steady state analysis, steady state value. So both these together we are going to see in this class. So first, there are three parameters in your sinusoidal. One is amplitude, third one, second one is your frequency and third one is your phase. So now if you see this waveform, we have got a positive and negative half cycle. So amplitude here, it can be represented by two things. One is your peak voltage, the other one is your peak to peak voltage. So peak voltage is when your waveform reaches its maximum of your, of its value in the first, in the positive half cycle alone, that is called as your peak voltage. So this part is called as your peak voltage. So from zero to this maximum point, whatever value it has reached, it is called as your peak voltage. And peak to peak voltage is twice this value because the negative maximum and the positive maximum together is called as your peak to peak voltage. Otherwise, you can say that your peak to peak voltage is nothing but your maximum value it attains in your positive half cycle minus the maximum value it attains in your negative half cycle. So that gives you nothing but your two times your voltage of your peak voltage. The so next is your frequency. So frequency is nothing but number of times the cycle one particular positive half cycle repeats. So number of periods per second is called as a frequency. So now in this graph, you can say what is the time period? Time period is the time taken by the waveform to complete as one positive and one negative half cycle. So one positive and one negative or one negative and one positive together constitutes your one time period. So the inverse of your time period is called as your frequency. And you have two units in frequency. One general unit of your frequency is hertz, number of times the waveform repeats or uh, number of periods per second. But you have another value called angular frequency, which is indicated by omega. And the formula for your angular frequency is 2 phi f. So f is your frequency in hertz. When you multiply it by 2 phi, it becomes your angular frequency. And the third component in your sinusoidal waveform is your phase. So here, phase or value is the main cons constant concept and constant value based on which your waveforms will be keep on moving. So if you take an AC signal, it has voltage, current, power, and everything will be in the form of waveform only. So whether voltage or current or power, based on your phase angle only, the values will be changing for each and every inputs and outputs. 
see here we have got two values two waveforms and both are voltage first one is in blue color the second one is in red color so two voltages are there you can see that first voltage v1 starts at zero and keeps moving and if you see the red color voltage it takes some time period there is some lagging in the time and later it starts proceeding so from this waveform you can say that your waveform 2 lags behind your voltage v1 otherwise we can say that your v1 is leading your v2 so this is the concept of your phase angle the difference between the angle of your first voltage and the second voltage is your phase angle difference but here the time in this waveform is based on your time period when you draw the waveform in terms of your phase it is called as your frequency domain so generally complex number plays a very important part in calculating all your voltage current power in a ac circuit so if you you have three parameters mainly in your ac circuit and in that we have a inductive and capacitance value which is always represented j term that is the imaginary part so therefore you have to know what is a complex number a complex number consists of a real part and the imaginary part and it is generally represented by z is equal to x plus jy so this pattern can be represented in three different ways one is cartesian form the other name for cartesian form is rectangular form you can represent in the form of polar form where you have magnitude and angle alone and last one is your exponential form, form where you have a magnitude and the angle is represented exponentially so these are the three different forms you can represent your complex numbers now as i said phase r where we have two uh, time specification one is time domain the other one is frequency in time domain representation as in the beginning first slide we saw that your input voltage is given by vp sine of omega t plus phi or you can represent this by vp cos of omega t plus phi and in phase r representation that is nothing but your frequency domain we can represent your voltage or current or power in terms of your exponential form or your phase star form so mainly for all your calculations circuit calculation we will be using the phase star form where it is represented by a magnitude vp and an angle phi so this magnitude and phase star calculation or phase star representation is very important not only in your circuit theory but when you go for analysis such as stability of your system only magnitude and the phase angle plays a major role by using your Bode plot, polar plot you will plot all the values, you will find out the system's behavior and you will find the stability of the system so this frequency domain is very very important in finding out the stability of your any, any electrical or mechanical system so the two important components which is which forms your reactance part of your AC circuit or your imaginary part of your AC circuit is your inductance and capacitance. Now, we will see this circuit where you are given a AC input, voltage as input and you have only inductance alone. As I said, your inductance and capacitance are imaginary values represented by J. So, J always indicates a phase shift of 90 degrees. In this circuit, we have only inductance, that means there is a phase shift of 90 degrees with respect to your voltage and current. And when you have an inductance, that means your current is always lagging. And since it's a pure inductance circuit, it will be lagging by 90 degrees. So you can see this phase diagram, your voltage is here and your current lags exactly 90 degrees with respect to your voltage because it is a pure inductive circuit. So you can see this waveform and this waveform also your angle is 90 degrees and this blue color represents your voltage and red color waveform is your current and there is always a phase lag of 90 degree that is when your voltage reaches is 90 degree your current reaches a zero degree so your voltage leaves or your current lags behind your voltage in case of your inductance next is your capacitance this is also your reactance which is also your imaginary part so now in this circuit we have got only a capacitance value we don't have any resistance or inductance value so capacitance again a reactance value which has a j term but here it leaves your current by 90 degree so inductance is lagging capacitance means leading so you can see this phase diagram so in this diagram the voltage 
is lagging with respect to current by an angle of 90 degree. Why exactly 90 degree? Because we don't have resistance or inductance in this circuit. So we can say that your voltage is lagging or your current is leading. And you can see this waveform, you have got two both your voltage and current waveforms. Your current is leading, it starts initially and then your voltage waveform starts. So this is the characteristics of your capacitor. Now impedance, impedance generally consists of three components, three parameters. One is resistance, inductance and capacitance. So your AC circuit can have only resistors or it can have only inductance or only capacitance or combination of any, all, any of these components. It can have all three also. So if you take a circuit which has got only your resistance, then your impedance is equal to R alone because you don't have any imaginary part. When you have a capacitor alone, you won't have your real part at all because you don't have resistance and your capacitance is given by 1 by J omega C. Unit of capacitance actually farad. So to convert it into ohms only, we'll, we'll be using the formula 1 by J omega C and then it becomes ohms. And similarly for inductance, the formula for inductance is given by J omega L where the unit of L is Henry. Okay, therefore, these are the Ohm's law where as per Ohm's law, voltage is equal to the product of current and impedance and current is from the Ohm's law, current is nothing but voltage by impedance. So, capacitance inductance plays a major role in forming the reactive path and whether the current leads or lags is based on the amount of capacitance and inductance you have in your circuit. So, as I said in the earlier slide, Complex number plays a very important role in calculating your impedance. So impedance is generally given by R plus J where R is your real number which is nothing but your resistance and J is your reactance, reactance part where it is an imaginary part. So reactance consists of both your inductance and capacitance. So when you have your values in impedance, I mean real form, that is your impedance is in real form, you can calculate, you can convert that into polar form by using these two formulas. So the magnitude for polar form is given by square root of R square plus X square where R is your real part and X is your imaginary part. If you want to find out the phasor angle, the formula is given by tan inverse of your imaginary part divided by your real part. So now we'll see some gate questions. So a circuit is given and it has got all the three elements and all the three elements are connected in parallel. Okay. And the supply voltage V is given in the question as sine 2T. So what they have asked us to calculate is find out the overall current flowing in this circuit. And the values of R, L and C are given. R is given by 1 by 3 ohms. L is given by 1 by 4 Henry. And C is given by 3 Farad. As you said, L and C have their own units. So to convert that into impedance only, we are in, in we are taking into account the angular frequency. Okay. So now this is a circuit. The supply voltage V of T is sine 2T. I said initially in the first slide, the input voltage is given by V of T is equal to Vp sine of omega T plus phi. So now we are going to equate this input voltage with this formula. So by using this formula, we can say that the Vp is nothing but 1 because the coefficient of sine 2t two two is 1. Therefore, your peak voltage is 1. And this phi value is not given in this question. Therefore, your phi angle value is equal to 0. Therefore, in your frequency domain or your phase R representation, your input voltage is given by Vp is equal to 1 angle 0. And in this, you can say this is omega t. So sine 2t means where 2 is nothing but your omega value. Now, we are given I, L, uh, L and C components are also connected in parallel. So we need to calculate XL and XC. Only, when, only then you can convert that into ohms. So XL formula is J into omega into L. And XC formula is 1 by J into omega into C. So now, since all these components are connected in parallel, the overall current flowing through this circuit is nothing but the sum of all these three currents. So overall current I is nothing but current flowing through your resistance plus current flowing through your inductance plus current flowing through your capacitance. So generally as per Ohm's law, we know current is nothing but V by your impedance. So current flowing through the first resistance is nothing but V by R. 
plus current flowing through inductance nothing but V by XL and current flowing through capacitance is nothing but V by XC. V is a common, take it outside, so you'll get 1 by, R value is given as 1 by 3, so 1 by 1 by 3 plus 1 by, what is XL formula? J omega L, so J omega is 2 given in the question and L is 1 by 4 plus 1 by XC, XC formula is 1 by J omega C, so again 1 by J omega is 2 and capacitance value is given as 3 and 3, therefore 3 farad. Therefore, when you simplify this, it becomes V into, this 3 will go up, so it becomes 3, 2 and 2 it get cancelled, again it becomes minus 2J, because J is in the denominator, and this J comes to the numerator, so this becomes 6J, 2 into 3, it is 6. So, this equation becomes I is equal to 3 plus 4J. So, in the previous slide I said, you can convert your rectangular form to polar form using your formula for magnitude and phasor. So, the input voltage in phasor form is 1 angle 0. So, V is again nothing but 1. And the magnitude of current from this is calculated as square root of 3 square plus 4 square. 3 square is 9, 4 square is 16, 16 plus 9 is 25. Square root of 25 is nothing but 5. So, that is your magnitude of your current. What is the angle? Angle formula is calculated by tan inverse, your imaginary part by real part, that is tan inverse 4 by 3, which is nothing but 53.1 degree. Even though you are not calculating the angle, in this problem particularly for us, all the angles are same. So, angle is already given in the answer. All the values have the same values, 53.1. And you need to find out whether it is 25 or 5 plus or minus angle. Since the angle is magnitude we have calculated for current as 5 and your angle for voltage is 0 and current is also positive. So, you have a positive angle. So, your angle, your answer for current is 5 sine of in terms of your uh, um, time domain sine of omega is 2 given in the question 2t plus f i is 53.1. So, answer A is the correct answer for this problem. That is the overall current that is flowing through this circuit. Now, this is the second problem. Second is here, you have to find the RMS value of the current in the circuit. So, RMS value is, as it says, in an alternating current or an AC voltage or current waveform, your voltage is not a constant one. It starts from zero, slight, it keeps on increasing, reaches a maximum value and then decreases and goes to the negative wave and negative maximum again becomes zero. So, how to find the root mean square? So, what are the actual overall values it has been taken? So, that is called as your root mean square. What you will do in that is, you square all the points of your sine wave of a single for a particular time period, for a single time period. You will take the square of all the points, you will take the mean of that and then you will take the square root. So, after doing all these calculations, your formula for root mean square, whether it is current or voltage, is your peak voltage divided by root 2. So, now we have seen the, circ the circuit was given here. We have got, this is your supply voltage and the supply voltage is given as 1 sin t. And it is connected with a 1 ohm resistance in series. And then you have two parallel circuits. One has got 1 ohm resistance. The other has a inductance and a capacitance. Both the values has 1 farad and 1 henry. Now, how to calculate the value of XL and XC? XL value formula is J omega L. So, from this value where omega V of T is equal to 1 sin T, your omega value is nothing but 1. Your VP value is also 1. So, polar representation of your voltage is 1 angle 0. Voltage magnitude is 1 and your phasor angle is 0. So, based on that, you know omega value is 1. So, XL value is J into 1. L is also 1 Henry. Therefore, J1 ohms. We will calculate the XC value, it is 1 by J omega C is equal to 1 by J. Omega is 1, capacitance value is also 1 farad. So, what happens? When you take your J to the numerator, it becomes minus J 
one ohms. So the is the impedance J term alone. If you take into account this J one and minus J one will get cancelled, and your impedance becomes zero. So that means here at the first line, your impedance is zero. When your current will flow. When when the current will be flowing, when which part the current will be flowing, whenever your resistance or whenever you have a low resistance or low impedance, your current will be taking the that particular part where your resistance or impedance is less. So in this case, even though you have a resistance of one ohm in the center part, the upper part has the impedance of zero. That means it is the least. Resistance or least impedance part. So definitely, whatever current is produced in the circuit, it will not enter into your one ohm. Instead, it goes to the upper branch where you have your inductance and capacitance. Therefore, keeping this in mind, we can say that the current flowing in the center part is zero. So that means no current flows. It's like an open circuit in the center. You can say it, you can just have a circuit with only one ohm, one net, one net, and there is no center resistance because of the values of your capacitors and inductance. So the current I of T is nothing but the current that flows through this particular in this one ohm. It's the same current flowing throughout your circuit. So the formula for current is V by Z. So V P is nothing but the magnitude of V P is one. So one and zero impedances again. This here you don't have any impedance. I mean you, here you don't have any reactance. You have only real part. Therefore, is that is equal to one. So one by one is nothing but one amps. So your peak current value is one amps. So now your RMS value, as I said earlier, it is your peak current by root two value. Therefore, your RMS value is one by root two amps. So B is your correct answer for this system. So these are the examples of your gate questions. Uh, mostly based on this one, you will, you will be based on the reactance, inductance, resistance values, and different combination of this. How your current is flowing, what is the RMS value, peak value will be discussed in all your gate questions. That is that is the question they will be asking you in all your gate questions. So thank you for listening to this class. We will again continue this. Sinusoidal steady-state analysis in the next session. Thank you.